honeybees are adorable. They're fuzzy, colorful, and make delicious honey. They also coordinate attacks on bears and other mammals for the greater good of the colony. How did an animal so cute become such a badass? What are the secrets of the honeybee stinger? And why do they die after stinging? This is the science of the venom harpoon, the honeybee stinger. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Honeybees have one of the most hardcore defense mechanisms on Earth. When they sting a large animal, like a mammal, their stingers get lodged in their foe's skin, and the bee dies. This is common knowledge, but it isn't common behavior. Most venomous insects can easily inject their venom without dying. Wasps, ants, and even other bees sting and live to fly another day. So why are the cutest insects the most dramatic ones? Why do they need to die for the greater good? And how can losing brave warriors possibly benefit the colony? These are surprisingly complicated questions, so let's dig in. The bee stinger is basically a venom-injecting harpoon. If you zoom in, you'll see two barbed blades and a stabilizing structure to hold them in place. The blades are controlled by muscles in the bee's abdomen and are thrust one at a time in an alternating pattern. As the blades dig into the skin, the backward-facing barbs catch into the fleshy parts, helping them dig deeper and deeper. The stabilizing structure is connected to the venom reservoir and deposits it as the blades penetrate the skin. Okay, that's terrifying, but it's not too different from other stingers, or even the proboscis of a mosquito. It's a knife connected to a stiff hose, kind of like a bayonet. The only difference, which is a huge difference, is the backwards-facing barbs. The barbs, much like the barbs of the spines of a cactus, are designed to make the stabbing easy, but the removal almost impossible. It's a bit counterintuitive, but a barbed stinger goes in easier than a smooth stinger. The barbs help concentrate the force at the tip of the spear, so the tiny honeybee needs less force to pierce the tough skin of a bear or a human. But, because there's always a but in nature, the barbs make it much harder to remove the stinger. The bee would need about 10 times more force to take it out than it needed to put it in. And quite simply, she ain't that strong. So instead of getting stuck forever and then quickly getting squashed by the mammal, the bee flies away and the stinger gets ripped out of its body. The venom sac stays attached and continues to pump venom after the bee has escaped. This is called sting autotomy, and it's an amazing way to inject the maximum amount of venom and cause the maximum amount of pain. The ripping off of the stinger also releases alarm pheromones, so at the same time as the mammal is being injected without juice, chemicals are in the air to tell the other bees to do the same. This is how you end up with one of those classic My Girl situations. Unfortunately, it isn't a clean break. Along with the venom sac, parts of the abdomen, digestive system, and muscles of the honeybee are ripped off which inevitably causes it to die. But sometimes it takes up to five days for the bee to finally pass away. And during this time, they can still chase the mammal or even bite it. Yep, bees can bite, apparently. We don't even know how much it hurts. We don't even know for sure if bees feel pain at all the way that we understand it. But that's a question for another episode. What we do know is that bees are very motivated to protect their colonies and will make the mammals suffer for a couple of hours and then be very itchy for a few more days. The idea of Max Payne is to discourage the mammal from ever getting close to bees again. But this is unlikely to happen because honey is undeniably delicious. You've probably noticed that I've been calling the bee's mortal enemy a mammal. This is because these gut-wrenching stings are only lethal when they're on mammals or other large animals with elastic flesh and skin. Our inherent squishiness is what traps the stinger in our skin. When bees fight other insects with hard exoskeletons, the stinger doesn't get stuck. 
That means they can sting multiple times, just like wasps and ants. But still, sacrificing themselves by tearing their guts apart is a pretty extreme behavior. Why would a honeybee choose to do this? And how could this have evolved? Female workers, which are the only members of the colony who can sting, already don't get to reproduce. Only their mom, the queen bee, gets to reproduce. Their job is to make sure their mom has as many babies as possible. And if it means dying to protect their mom and their siblings, that's a sacrifice they instinctively make. Colonies have thousands of honeybees. Losing a few workers to scare off an existential threat is more than worth it. Speaking of their mom, the queen bee has a similar stinger structure to the worker bees, except she uses it to lay her eggs. Their ancestors used those hoses exclusively for reproduction, but over time, some species adapted to also use them as venomous hypodermic needles. Queens also have a stinger, but it's smaller, less barbed, and used mostly to fight other queens. Honeybees are not the only social insects that sacrifice themselves for the horde. Camponotus ants, also known as exploding ants, can crack open their exoskeletons and release sticky chemicals to immobilize predators and rival ants. Globitermes termites also do the same thing to fight off ants. So really, it's not that strange for insects to sacrifice themselves. But some others are perfectly happy stinging you over and over again. This is the case with the most annoying insect of the summer, the yellow jacket wasp. Yellow jackets are everywhere these days. They have found in humans a really consistent source of food. They love sugary foods to get energy for themselves and protein-heavy snacks to bring back to the colony to feed the larvae. If you try to fight them off, you'll get quickly stung and the wasp will fly away to continue looking for food elsewhere. They're the worst. The reason they don't die is simply because their stingers are smooth. This means the stinger doesn't get stuck, so it can be used multiple times. The trade-off is that each sting injects less venom compared to a honeybee sting. So why did they go that way? There are two major differences. First of all, honeybee predators are usually very large, like bears, who try to destroy the colony and eat all the honey. They don't give a bother if the whole colony collapses after that. So the bees need to send a very strong message and provide the most painful sting they can muster in their little body. Wasp predators are usually smaller. Birds, small mammals, and other insects might try to break into the colony to eat the nutritious larvae. They get attacked a lot. So being able to fight multiple times is more valuable than causing a lot of damage but just once. But secondly, and probably most importantly, wasps hunt. Adult yellow jackets survive mostly on a diet of sugar, but the larvae need a lot of protein and other nutrients to grow and reach metamorphosis. So the adults hunt small insects and other invertebrates to bring back to the colony to feed the babies. The babies, in return, secrete a sugar-rich goop out of their mouth, which the adults happily drink up. Yeah, cool. That's nice. I guess. Disgusting, but nice. The babies pull their own weight since they're just a few days old. They will one day grow to ruin our picnics and steal our food to exchange it for sweet baby goop. So there you have it. The combination of having to fight off massive predators and inject huge amounts of venom, combined with the fact that they're vegan and don't need their stingers to hunt, has created the perfect conditions for honeybees to develop single-use defense mechanisms. It makes sense, and it's pretty cool to see how evolution solved this problem for the bees. If you want to learn more about the amazing world of bees, check out this episode we made a couple of years ago. And if you can support any bee-protecting NGOs, please do so. Bees play a super important role in our ecosystems. We really need them. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya!